Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage. We're going to be working on the 1958 Triumph TR3 behind me. In the last episode, we took care of the valance. We made a new panel from scratch and we replaced the bottom, the chin of the valance. And I'm looking at it here, it's still standing outside drying because I painted it. And I'm amazed how well it turned out. I wasn't expecting it to be so nice. So anyways, in this episode, we're gonna be working on the battery box. We're gonna remove the bonnet. It's gonna be easier to work. And we're gonna start crackalacking there. We're gonna remove the box and replace it with the new ones. So without further ado, let's get crackalacking. All right, so I removed the bonnet and I also removed the brace from here cross member so I can have easy access to the battery box because like we said this is going to be our next project. So this battery box has already been repaired once and as far as I can see they just put a flat sheet of metal inside they didn't touch the walls they just covered holes but the old box is still there you can see it here with a big hole in it. You see the new one has the panel going up and have this flange because that's what it does here it goes up and then it comes this way so we have two options here one option is to do it the proper way uh, as it was done we have to drill the spot welds from here and remove the whole thing the other option is some people what they do is they make a cut here under this hole and weld it but i don't think it's worth i mean it's just a few rivets to need to be drilled and here in the back here you see i don't know why we don't have a flange here yeah because it's not gonna be possible to be installed if there's a flange coming out here that's why what they did i'm sorry i'm gonna pass you through this hole you see there's a piece of metal there covering the gap because otherwise we were gonna have a gap here because you see so that's what we are gonna do as well hopefully this piece actually is gonna stay there this piece of metal we're gonna drill it from this side these spot welds are gonna stay so the piece should stay there so anyway i'm gonna go around and start removing this and you enjoy some nice classical music and you can watch me in time lapse mode That was fun. <laughs> okay, we bent it a little bit here. It was catching, but we're gonna straighten it now. Unfortunately, here I had to make a cut through the gutter, you wanna call it, because this apparently was welded here, welded to this part. And I'm assuming they assembled the bulkhead with the battery box there. They welded this part here to that part. And only after that, the gutter and the saddle. Not saddle. Somebody told me it was something else and now I forgot. You see, I forgot the term already. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that part came after. So anyways... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a grinder. I'm going to grind all that. I'm going to weld wherever we need to repair this and grind them again, straighten it, and I'll bring you back, which might be in four days because I have a little bit more time tonight and then I'm going away again. Oh, my God.
Okay, so all the holes here that were from the spot welds are welded and ground down. I even welded these cuts here and ground them down. Oh, there's one here that I need to grind, okay. So I'm gonna grind this and then we're gonna start fitting the new box. Let's see how easy that's gonna be or hard. <laughs> that was expected, wasn't it? Yeah. How do we even do that? <laughs> so we might need to cut it here after all. Ah, I don't like that. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's not gonna work. I'd rather bend this down. The other option was to... Before we welded this, we could have bent this up a little. But that was gonna distort everything here on the top. I better not touch there. So, uh, this center panel here is overlapped by this panel by half an inch here, and there's a spot weld here and a spot weld here. If we drill these out, we can bend this panel down, and that's going to allow us to move the whole box a little bit forward so this can go under. The problem is, after that, I'm not really sure how I'm going to straighten this panel nicely. I'm gonna have to reach underneath and push with something, but if it bends, then it's gonna be pain in the butt to um, to straighten it. But I don't think we have other options. So let me drill one, literally two spot welds. That's what we. That's what holds this panel to these two. Yep. Let's do that. Because if we cut here, we're gonna have a huge weld. Here we're gonna deal with this somehow. Is there more? I don't think so. That's it. Sometimes I find those in the middle of the night in my hands and they bug me. Once I had to get up and go and find tweezers to remove it because it was driving me crazy. <laughs> okay. Try that. There you go. Okay. I don't like this box though because you see it needs to be there. This flange is bent in the wrong place. So we have to unbend it and bend it again. Oh my god. You see now when it is laying flat here, there is like a quarter inch more that it needs to go up. I can push it up. That's how it needs to be. But that raises it here by quarter inch. So out it comes to be bent again and then we have big gaps here we're gonna have to we're gonna fill this up with weld everything else fits pretty well and i just need to make sure just need to make sure that this panel can go up if it turns out that we need to cut it it's gonna be a disaster after we weld the box there Anyway, let me take it out and see. Oh, I need to grind here as well. And you see this needs to be curved a little bit. See, this panel is curved. We don't want to bend it down too much, the box. We're going to make this flange, after we re-bend it, we're going to make it curved a little bit. It's the same both sides, right? Yeah. 
Okay. It's not a heritage part, that's why it doesn't fit. Uh. Buy new parts, they say, they're gonna make your life easier. Sure. This is where it was before the bend, so now we're gonna bend it. Yeah, let's see if we can fit it on the brake. It actually worked. Now, I don't know what the angle needs to be, but like we said, we're gonna raise the center a little bit more, or now we're gonna have to bend these down. I guess we're gonna have to fit it to find out what we have to do. I think these need to go down. I'm so glad you can remove the valance from there and just walk into the engine bay. did we do that before? Oh, now it's longer. <laughs> okay. Well, we bent this already this much. Oh, a little bit more, baby. These the ends need to come down. Can we do it like this? Yeah. <laughs> That's a beautiful now. Perfect fit here. This can come up a little bit here. And perfect fit here. An almost perfect fit there. The center needs to come up a little bit more. And that's it. But now I'm going to take it out. Let's actually mark where we want holes for plug wheels. So we're going to have one here. And one here. One here, one here. And then here we can do them anywhere. So I'm going to take it out now. I'm gonna drill all the holes for the plug welds. I'm gonna raise the center a little bit more. When I'm gonna grind this here because now it's in my way. I'm gonna paint everything inside. The back of the box where the paint got peeled and then we can start welding it. So here I can push with the piece of wood from underneath 
and well. So that's going to be fine. And that's how I'm going to go all the way. Just want to make sure that it lays, it's laying flat everywhere, including there. It's pretty good. Let me show you. See now, it reaches all the way to the top, which is great. So now we just need to clamp it here and do all the plug welds. Then it's going to be pain in the butt to grind them, but whatever. Here, like we said, we're going to have to fill this gap unless we want to weld something from behind. And here, I think we're just going to weld it. We're going to fill it up. It's going to be stronger, right? So I think we are good here. This is right in the corner here. This is right in the corner. So we can go to town with the welder now. Okay, so it's all welded and it looks good. The plug welds look like spot welds, right? We can almost leave them there. No, we're gonna grind them. So that's it, it's installed. I'm just gonna grind it now here. I'm gonna have to grind this. We're gonna utilize our belt sander, even though you see <laughs> the belt is like, anyway. We're gonna see what we're gonna use where, but as soon as we grind this, we're gonna be done with the battery box and then we can jump on the rear floor there in the boot. Okay, it is all ground down and I think it looks pretty good. Everything is matching here. Brand new. <laughs> Here, these are welded and ground down pretty well. So, looks good. And this is what it looks like when it's painted. So, I'm happy with it. Anyway, I think that's the last part that we needed to do for the front end. And we have to move to the back now. But before we do that, I think I'm just gonna put back the valance and the bonnet and fasten everything to make sure that everything is still good. I actually have to grind a little bit the bonnet right here, like there, and a few other cuts that I made. You see there, I still have to weld even. So I'm gonna do that off camera, and I'm gonna fit everything back on the car to make sure that we have good gaps, good everything. And I'm gonna bring you back to show you. And I guess that's gonna be everything for this video. In the next one, we're gonna change the floor in the boot. All right, everything is assembled again. And I'm glad to report that everything looks perfect still. <laughs> no issues. Actually, there's one issue that I'm gonna have to deal with. Um, somehow the curve here of the valance doesn't match the curve of the fender anymore. It used to match better. Like it's a little bit higher here and it's a little bit lower here, the valance. So we're gonna have to adjust that. I'll see when I take it out if I can actually put the flange into the shrinker stretcher. That's gonna be interesting. And we might shrink a little bit here, stretch a little bit here, just to make this curve better. The other one matches perfectly here but we haven't touched this side, right? Here we changed the flange in this corner and we haven't touched here, but I don't know why. But anyways, um, the gap here, this one was a little bit smaller and then the other side here, it's a little bit bigger, but it is acceptable. 
we have a bead here that goes between the fender and the valance all the way to the scuttle so we are good I don't know we can move the bonnet a little bit the entire bonnet if we can move that in that direction but here it looks good everything is as we left it before this gap still looks good I'm happy with it and yeah Phil brought me the brackets that hold the bonnet in place so now it's actually fastened with the original hardware um, however let me show you something I needed to raise them by adding washers underneath here and this one even more so I'm not sure if there is a spacer normally there what's there I don't know there's backing I don't know what material that is that came with the bracket but it needs another probably three eighths of an inch so I don't know what's going on there but I don't know if he's gonna keep this style um, I know that there's aftermarket style holders that they are actually a pin with a hole goes through the hole on the bonnet and you install a pin with a ring at the end so it's like literally like the racing style i know that david has these in his dr3 so anyway that's up to the owner what he wants to use for me it's important to be able to close it properly remember before i was holding it with a finger here and a finger there and that's how I was keeping it closed. Now we can close it properly and uh, see the gaps. And I think they look great. All right, and with that, I think officially we are done with the front end of the body. Well, again, I need to do that adjustment on the curve, but that I will do when I start taking the car apart because before we deliver it, we're gonna take it apart again. I mean, we're gonna take off the fenders and maybe the valance because um, the trailer that the owner uses is a little bit too narrow and too short <laughs> so we're gonna have to take it apart but of course we're gonna have it assembled completely at some point to make sure that all the gaps the bonnet the door the boot lid which also is here now the few brought it so we can adjust the rear scuttle panel I think because we have an issue there as well probably somebody sat on the scuttle and curved it the wrong way so we're gonna do that but first we're gonna finish with the big repairs which as you may know already consist of replacing the boot floor and that's it the rest is small repairs here and there's straightening here welding a hole somewhere straightening some of the dents etc etc so we're close to be done and I'm gonna give it a push. So stay tuned for that. In the next video, we're gonna do the boot floor, but for today, we're gonna end it here. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for commenting, subscribing, sharing, and supporting the channel, which is very important because as I like to say, thanks to you, this channel still exists because if it wasn't for your help, it wasn't gonna be worth for me spending all the time editing videos. So thank you so much for being patrons or for sending donations once in a while through paypal or, or even just for sharing my videos so more people can watch and increase my revenue from youtube also which i'm trying to turn into my main income so anyways thank you guys i really appreciate your help and i'll see you in the next one bye